Be sure to get the latest book by Dr. Barry D. Walker, Judas Iscariot, A Portrait of a Sinister Disciple. This brief but insightful book will equip you with beneficial knowledge and understanding to help you deal with deceptive people that stab you in the back. Become a more productive church leader, parent, student, business manager, or spouse. Order your copy today for only $10 plus $2 shipping and handling. To order, call the church office at 770-834-7853 or order securely online at www.aplaceofrefugechurch.org. Israel or Judah was in a tight place contextually. There was not only one enemy that had came out against them, but three enemies are mentioned in the text that says that basically a whole lot of folk wanted to see the people of God destroyed. Did not want the people of God to prosper. And of course, this was literal. Even historically, it is talked about in reference to Israel fighting many nations. But you have to look at the passage not just from a literal standpoint, you have to look at it as what it says or speaks to you in reference to what you are going through concerning your enemies. We may not have enemies like the Ammonites. We may not have enemies like the Philistines, but we do have enemies. We have things that are trying to destroy us. One enemy that Paul identified in the book of 1 Corinthians is, is death. And death is not just uh, an enemy that tries to end our life, naturally speaking. But death is something that will try to ruin you when you consider it from a figurative standpoint. Death will try to invade your life and stop you from prospering stop you from being productive in every aspect death will try to come in and cause your mind to to operate in confusion cause you to make steps that are not orderly but are completely out of order so therefore we we have to recognize that as children of God we will always be facing some type of enemy whether the enemy is seen or unseen, there will always be something or somebody hostile toward us. I guarantee you that, that the majority of, of us in here this morning are going through some type of trial. And you're not going through it just because it's a part of life. You're going through it because you are a child of God. Understand this. When you are a child of God, it's as if... You have a mark on you. You have demons that are trying to take you out. You have situations that have been set up by demons that are trying to take you out. That's the reason we have to take to heart what uh, said to the churches of Asia Minor. Told them that they need to be sober, need to be diligent because their adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, goes about seeking whom he may devour as people of God, we have to stay on our face or we have to be worshipers of God in prayer. We have to recognize even when things are coming against us from every single direction that the primary thing we need to do is pray. Prayer changes things. 
Oh, God, help me say that to somebody. Prayer changes things. Jesus himself said in Luke 18 and 1, men ought always to pray and not to lose heart or faint. That means you should never give up even when it comes across your mind to give up. Even when it looks like there is no hope, you still should stand firm and say, I can't throw in the tower. I'm just going to fall on my knees and send up some Judah to God. I cannot throw in the towel I'm just going to call on the one that said when I'm in trouble that he would be a very present help for me I'm just going to call on that name that's above every other name that name that brings salvation how many know the Bible tells us that whoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be delivered you ain't got to worry yourself to death about your problem you just need to go to God in prayer you don't have to wonder when you don't know what to do naturally speaking. All you have to do is go to God in prayer because the Bible promises us in Proverbs, the third chapter, the fifth verse and following, that if we acknowledge our God in all of our ways, he will direct our path. Good God, encourage two folks. You just need to go to God in prayer. Oh, you just need to go to God in prayer. Jesus was so excited about prayer to where he said to his disciples on one day, ask and it shall be given. Seek and you will find. Knock and it shall be opened. For everyone that asks is going to be given. Everyone that seeks is going to find. And everyone that knocks is going to be opened. You have to know that God listens to prayer. He especially listens to the cries of his children. Say it through one writer that his ears were always open to the cries of the saints. God is always wanting to know what's going on in your life. God is always wanting to do something for you, child of God. Don't you ever think that God is not concerned about your life, not concerned about your daily activities, not concerned about the troubles that come your way. That's the reason the Hebrew writer said in Hebrews 4 and 6, that we as children of God need to go boldly before the throne of God asking for grace, asking for help in the time of need. God will help you. Am I right about it? Shout at somebody, God will help you. You need to know that he'll help you. Wherever you are right now, you may be going through storm after storm after storm. It may be something raging in your life right now, but God will help you. Oh, good God, I'm getting happy. I said God will help you. I know I got at least seven witnesses in here that know God will help you because his arm is not too short that he cannot save he will pull you out of the deepest hole he will pull you out of your predicament and he will place you on a rock to stay and one thing you need to always have in your midst is somebody that believes in prayer as a matter of fact if you are going to follow anybody the first thing you need to know about that person is if that person has a relationship with God and if that person believes in the power of prayer I don't want to follow no pastor that does not have a relationship with God and does not believe in the power of prayer I don't want no deacon taking my money that does not believe in the power of God does not believe that God God can do anything save fail. I don't want elders coming to the hospital to pray for me if they don't believe that God will heal the sick. You need to have somebody that has a relationship with God and believes in the power of prayer. As a matter of fact, as an adult, if you have children, you need to let your children know that the one thing you do trust is God for your salvation. And the one thing you're going to do every single day is seek God in prayer the Bible tells us that it, again if we ask it shall be given if we seek we will find if we knock it will be open somebody in here believe in the power of prayer 
in the midst of warfare. Jehoshaphat went to prayer. Jehoshaphat went to prayer. Jehoshaphat went to prayer knowing that he did not need to have the final say. But God needed to have the final say. Jehoshaphat went to prayer knowing that despite the threats of their enemy, that their enemy didn't have the final say, that God had the final say. See, the doctor can tell you something, but the doctors do not have the final say. The bank can tell you no, but the bank does not have the final say. Our God has the final say. And so Jehoshaphat went to prayer, talking to God. How many know when you, when, when you really talk to God that God will come down in the mist? He, he may not say a word to you verbally speaking, but, but, but you know that he's listening and, and he's ready to move on your behalf because he will saturate the room. He, he will saturate your entire be God will touch you from your crown to the sole of your feet. God will let you feel his presence thereby letting you know that he is listening to everything that you have to say. And then God will, will also speak to you in the prayer closet. It may not be an audible voice. It may just be him letting you know in your God consciousness or in your spirit exactly what you need to do. And such was the case with Jehoshaphat. God got to talking to him within his spirit. And such is the case with, with a number of us. We have not heard the audible voice of God, but God has talked to talk in our spirit time and time again. Am I right about it? As a matter of fact, God will also talk to you through his preacher. He will talk to you through a sister. He will talk to you through a brother. He will talk to you to, through somebody that you may not know that intimately, but God knows how to get your attention. Am I right about it? And, and so he knew that Judah, the people of praise, needed direction, knew that they had to make a decision. So God gave the answer, the direction, the decision to the leader. He gave it to the leader. And see, I love that about God because often when, when people congregate, God is not just going to try to give everybody just an individual word. He's going to make sure that he gives a specific word to the leader. A word that we deem a rhema. A word that's so potent, so powerful that God will tailor it for everybody. It can be a word that, that, that maybe has seven sentences. But every one of those sentences will be for the people of God that have assembled together to hear from heaven. God will feed you through your leader. That's the reason he does things like, like I stated during the offering. He speaks plans, visions, secrets to his servants, the prophets. God will speak a word, will put a word in the belly of a sent preacher, according to the book of Romans, the 10th, the 14th, and the 15th verse. A word that's so powerful that when it is released, it will be released as a message of faith. That's the reason Romans 10 and 17 says, so then faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. 
And so the Lord had put such a word in Jehoshaphat. Jehoshaphat was not an ordained preacher. Jehoshaphat was not even an ordained prophet, but he was God's leader. He was the person that God had embedded in his being a word that the people of praise needed to hear. And, and so his word primarily had one word that stood out amongst everything else. That word, believe. Believe. Knew that Israel was somewhat shady, somewhat fearful, somewhat in doubt. Why? Because they, they were facing, naturally speaking, insurmountable odds. And how many know that there are certain things that will just trigger fear, trigger doubt? Don't look at me like that. We are humans. And certain things can happen that, that will cause doubt to come our way, that will cause fear to come our way. But we have to understand that, that when such happens, that God will give us exactly what we need in order to keep doubt, fear, and, the, and such at bay. Am I right about it? And so, he wanted them to believe. This is important. To believe, contextually, means this. To think talk and walk in certainty to think talk and walk in certainty that's what he wanted face an insurmountable odds but I want you to think certain talk certain and walk certain don't allow anything to cause you to utter out of your mouth that which is contrary to my will. Speak the truth. Speak the truth even though it does not look like what I told you is going to manifest. And see, believe is bigger than the text. You have to think that what God said is going to happen despite what's attacking your mind. You have to speak that God's promise is going to be fulfilled despite what you're looking at. And you have to walk in certainty, walk in truth, despite being in the wilderness. The wilderness represents a place of trial. And tribulation. A, a, a place of where seemingly the enemy has the upper hand. And see Judah was in the wilderness of Tekoa. In a hot spot, tight place. And the word for them, believe. But don't just believe in your own strength. Don't believe that something is just going to drop out the sky. Believe who you say you have a relationship with. If you don't have a relationship with God, I'm not asking you to believe him. But if you say you have a relationship with God, that's who I want you to believe. You've got to believe your God. If you don't know him that way, don't worry about believe. We, we'll just get somebody else to stand in the gap for you. But if you believe the Lord your God, something going to happen. How many know I'm, I'm, I'm talking more than the text? I'm talking to somebody in here right now. You, you just need to believe your God. Let's break that down. You need to believe the one that's in charge of everything. 
You need to believe the one that can do something about your situation. You need to believe the one that, that can supply not just some of your needs, but every one of your needs. You need to believe the one that can turn that thing completely around. You need to believe the one that, that had the boldness to stand forth and say better is here and better is coming. You need to believe the one that spoke when there was nothing and said let that be something and everything that he said came in to be. Say to your neighbor if you got a relationship with God it's time for you to believe what he told you. How many God unspoke to you, whether through me or through somebody else or in your proud closet, and you know God untold you something despite what you're going through right now? You need to believe your God because your God has a track record that says about him he has never lied. Matter of fact, it is impossible for him to lie. He just can't do it. God ain't going to backslide. God is not going to do the wrong thing. He's going to do the right thing. And the right thing is he's going to do according to his word. So whatever God told you, as long as you hold on to your faith, as long as you hold on to your belief, God is going to bring that thing to pass. He is going to make it happen. The question is, do you believe that? Believe who? The Lord your God. But this is the thing. You have some that are somewhat like the disciples of Christ. They'll say that Jesus is their Lord. But they won't do what he tells them to do. Consider Luke 6 and 46. Go there. Consider what, what Jesus asked his disciples. Y'all stay with me. I'm almost done. Look at Luke 6 and 46. Lord have mercy. This bomb had to come. You're going to hear it blow up somewhere. Because it's going to blow up because somebody guilty. Somebody's guilty this morning. It's going to be a silent bomb, so you got to be in the spirit to hear it. <laughs> Consider Luke 6 and 46. Jesus asked his disciples, why do you call me Lord, Lord, and not to do the things which I, which I say? Walker, I told you, you to believe. You always telling folk, you know you say. You know you have the Holy Ghost. But when I tell you to do one, two, three, you don't do it. I told you, sister, to stand on what I promised you. I told you I was going to heal you. But instead of you standing on what I told you, you decided to take the alternative. Brother, I told you I was going to bless you with your heart's desire. Why did you have to run crying to your mama? I told you I was going to do it. All you had to do was just stand. Believe what I promised you. Why call me? Lord, Lord, and not do what I tell you to do. I told you some bombs were going to go off. You know how you can tell? If somebody mouse quiet beside you, a bomb went off. In the spirit, it's like, boom. Why? Because you have folk that will not trust God for salvation would not believe God for the impossible would not believe God for increase they, they doubt divine increase because they don't, they don't have patience or endurance to wait on the promise of God to manifest 
See, the scripture tells us in Hebrews 10 and 35 that we cannot cast away our confidence. We cannot cast away our belief. Why? Because it will cause reward to take place. If you just hold on to your belief, eventually you are going to see reward. You are going to see the bounty of God and you are going to see it God's way. You're going to see the good measure come in. You're going to see the press down, the shaking together and the running over. But understand this, it might come as a small thing first. But Bible says despise not the day of small beginnings. It may start small, but eventually you will see the good measure. You will see the press down. You will witness the shaking together. And you will glorify God for the running over. Lord, I've been believing you, but, but Lord, ain't nothing happening. Do I need to do something else? Hush, Walker. Look close, Walker. Walker, you're looking for something big, but I need you to look close because I'm already moving on your behalf. I'm already doing something for you, but you're so tunnel. Say to your neighbor, you can't have tunnel vision when it comes to the will of God. You have to be able to see God moving in, in just the little things. And when you see him moving in the little things, that's when you need to start dancing. That's when you need to start turning in victory. Because you know God has exemplified throughout the scripture that though he may start small, when all is said and done, he is going to cause great things to happen. Am I right about it? Jesus himself said. Be sure to get the latest book by Dr. Barry D. Walker, Judas Iscariot, A Portrait of a Sinister Disciple. This brief but insightful book will equip you with beneficial knowledge and understanding to help you deal with deceptive people that stab you in the back. Become a more productive church leader, parent, student, business manager, or spouse. Order your copy today for only $10 plus $2 shipping and handling. To order, call the church office at 770-834-7853 or order securely online at www.aplaceofrefugechurch.org. Thank you for watching Productive Living with Bishop Barry D. Walker. To order today's message in its entirety, please call our church office at 770 770- 834-7853 and please reference the CD number on your screen.